Infamous gunslinger Desmond Gibbons, better known across the Wild West as the Cactus Kid, comes to the sleepy town of Clarkson. Trouble finds him in the unlikeliest of sources, the Sheriff. After their conflict, the Cactus Kid finds himself inexplicably wearing the badge of a lawman. Later, while on the trail of a serial killer, he and his deputy run afoul of a powerful druid, and the events that lead to the Cactus Kid's transformation into the hulking, four-armed projectile reptile are even more than the druid bargained for. From the Wild West to current day Los Angeles, where he meets superheroes Black Eagle and Red Hawk, and forms an uneasy alliance with the stunning but deadly Kitty Hawk. Join the projectile reptile on a journey of gunslinging druidic magic, superheroes, and artifacts. Projectile Reptile from Dojo Kun Comics, only on Indiegogo. Projectile Reptile from Dojo Kun Comics, only on Indiegogo. Are you ready? For the truly wild west between all of us we've probably seen hundreds of campaigns and this uh this one's really laid out cleanly i like i like how you've laid it out this campaign's very clear you've done a great job of communicating those things you can tell you've put a lot of care and attention into the book and the campaign look at this you've got a you've got an awesome book it's awesome the concept is cool it's it's a brand new character um it's it's a mixture of a western superhero it has something for uh, for everyone. This is a, a bit of a sprawling story. I thought we would just be staying in the uh, the Wild West, but it, it seems we're, we're going to town on this. If there is anyone out there who uh, thinks they might know someone who uh, might be interested in a gun slinging, gun toting, uh, reptile, cowboy, superhero time travel book. I love the yeah. four arms. That's so cool. The Wild West. I love it. I, I'm a big Western fan. I've always been a Western fan. Brian, you're a, a workhorse. Because I really like the decisions made here. It's really cool. And you're, you're making the right decisions. You're making the right changes. And you're, you're heading in the right direction. And that's those are all huge positives. And that's a testament to you wanting to succeed. And it's great to see. All right, guys. We do have a few projects up there right now that I do want to go over and make sure that we get our friends funded here for Comics Gate. We've got 160 people in the chat. So thank you for showing up. This is Projectile Reptile from Dojo Kun right here. Dojo Kun is yeah. like our truth barometer, our fraud barometer for Comics Gate. If uh, if he likes you, uh, you're probably in a good spot. Is where I where I think that uh, that it is. And you do a, you do a good service for comics game. Sincerely, though, your your um your 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 perseverance is sincerely inspirational to me. I do think that in, out of all of the books that you put out, this does seem like the best interior art I've seen so far. I mean, I, I think you found a really good artist. Oh, Renzo Rodriguez, the Impossible uh, Stars artist, did this cover. I love his art. He's a good guy. Cheers. He doesn't do drama. He just makes on time books, my friends. That's right. Um just like dojo there's some fantastic covers uh they're all amazing on this campaign uh projectile reptile that'll be my first hardcover cover oh, piece shit. ever yeah. oh, oh really? yeah just so you guys know i've oh. never had a hardcover release so that right that. there is history there in go. and of itself so if you want Besides... the first ever shelby robertson hardcover cover get in there and back projectile reptile yes. and get that shelby cover Hell yeah. And it's definitely some very cool character design. Got the mm -hmm. beautiful honeys right here. You, and I love how you're bringing the gingers back. We do not discriminate against against gingers and comic <laughs> books over here in the Indies. That's right. We bring them back. Yes, yes. <laughs> I love those freckles, man. That's why I love your game. It's simple. It's I love you can just get it. It's a little add-on. I love that, though. Just starting small and starting light. Well, I like the Mint 10 game. I've never seen something like that before. So that's really cool to see some new stuff. Great. Hey, a great, great trailer, Dojo King. Let's help Brian get this funded. Back projectile reptile. Yeah. All right. It's awesome. I love westerns. It, it's it's got like a it's got a western monster vibe. They used to have fun with these comics, and they don't anymore. But we're going to do it for them because they can't. And so uh, check out projectile reptile comics by Dojo Kun, good friend of the channel, great guy in Comicsgate here. Uh, and uh, and you 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 deliver your you deliver. 
you've got a I reputation do. for delivering. Good guy, on time books, no drama. No drama. John's right. Welcome to the uh, 38th episode of the Dojo Can Chill Shack. Happy that you're with us. If you're with us live, we appreciate it. If you're watching on the replay, we, we appreciate that too, because we want to get eyes on these great projects. Um, tonight, I have with me uh, a guest co-host, Ali Sangui, and uh, Ali's going to talk to us about her projects too. Uh, first, let's say hi to Rick Bulo, who's with us in the chat. Hi, Rick. Good to see you. We've, uh, we've communicated quite a bit on uh, his shows, but uh, let's, let's go ahead and bring in our guest co-hosts. Hi, how are you, Ali? I'm okay. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for being our guest co-host this week. Um, I try to have a different guest co-host on each time. I do have one repeat co-host that comes on now and then, maybe once, twice a month at Smiling Bandito. He'll be with us in a couple of weeks. But uh, today we're going to talk about Ali's projects, uh, two sign-up pages. But uh, first, let's say hey to our uh, our guest guest of honor, the man of the hour, John Dexter. How are you, John? Good. How are you doing? Uh, pleasure to be with you. Uh, this is the first time I've been on your show, and uh, I watched some episodes. I love your, your work. Um, that looks pretty interesting, your your comic series. I, I've uh, there's throw, us, throw a lot of it in there. Every, yeah. uh, every little thing. <laughs> People are teasing me a little bit about just throwing everything in the kitchen sink in there because yeah, of the genres. I cover a bunch of things on there, and really, it started out as a western. I won't, I won't dwell on mine for very long. We're here to talk about yours, but mine started out as a western, and then I wanted to make sure that I could connect it to my superhero universe. So things needed to change, and it was fun to rewrite it and make sure that he was sent forward in time to modern day Los Angeles. And technically, that's still the Wild West, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, that's kind of similar with um, my new comic, Dime Store Detective. Um, I had written it originally as Detective Mystery, and then uh, I just wasn't satisfied with it. I thought it could do a little bit better, a little more original. And then um, I added on the supernatural aspect to it, and I still wasn't all that happy with it. And so it sat for a few years. And then I had listened to a podcast about the Dixie Mafia and how they kind of controlled the dirty South, if you will, back in the late 60s and the crimes they did. And the story was about this guy who was a hitman for the Dixie Mafia, and his son idolized him. And it didn't matter that he was a murderer or anything he had done. Um, in his son's eyes, he could do no wrong. And it's that kind of was the the uh, kind of the glue that that brought it all together and made it a cohesive story. And I was really excited about it because it's a very original story. You're never going to, you ain't going to see a, a comic book like Dime Street Detective on the shelves. It's, it's, uh, it's got a lot of supernatural elements. It's a mystery and uh, it's noir, which I'm a big fan of uh, the old film noirs uh, like uh, LA confidential, Maltese Falcon and, and uh, true detective. You know, it's, it's great to see noir projects in, uh, in the indie comics creator network, if you will. Um, yeah. There, there's a few that are out there, but not many. So you're right. We're probably, this is a unique project. So uh, what I did was, as you can see, I brought it up on screen. And yeah. what, what I'll let you do is walk us through it. But before we go down there and, and, and look at the campaign, let's, let's have a look. You've got 51 backers. Mm -hmm. You've got three weeks to go. Now, does, yeah. does Kickstarter do it so that it's two sets of 30? Or is this like a 60-day campaign? How no. did you run it? No, it's just a 30 day camp and you can do 60 days, but those are kind of frowned upon It's just pointless kind of 30 days is where you want, where you want it. Some people do three weeks, but the vast majority, 90% are one month campaigns. Okay. Well, you're so doing I'm great. You're, seven, yeah. It's about 75%, right? Correct. Yeah. I'm 75%. I'm, I'm uh, 10 days into it. So mm -hmm. I'm only a third into it. So I foresee being funded. I'm knock on wood, hoping by next week I'll be fully funded. So we'll see what happens. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. It's um, I'm sure, you know, uh, you never know what's going to happen in a crowdfunded campaign. You <laughs> right. know? It's, it's so much anxiety and <laughs> every day uh, today I was thankful enough that I got a nice little boost because um, so yeah, that, that, that definitely helped out a lot. So yeah, you're um, right. It's been a few days since I've had a backer, and it's it's yeah. kind of nerve wracking. Oh, um, it is. That, but, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, you got to think about ways to inject life or interest 
back into the campaign. I have a few ideas, but let's let's have a look at your campaign and see if we can't just in, engender interest by having a look at this great story. Yeah, you told us so. a bit about it. This this cover, I, I like the layout. I like the Thank you. Like you said the noir like feel to it. There's a mystery just looking at the cover. There's no words on the cover, but there's still you know a lot of things that like draw your eye. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I wanted to have this being that is the center of the story kind of coming back and he comes into this town uh, that takes place is Athens, Georgia, where the story takes place. And then I have an old photograph of a father and a son next to their 1973 Plymouth Barracuda. That's the Moonshiners uh, <laughs> bootlegging car. I wanted okay. I wanted a car that, yeah, I wanted a car that kind of was a character in itself, kind of like the General Lee and uh, the Supernatural's car um, kit. You know, the, the, the car remains throughout the story and it starts out as the bootleggers car for moonshine and then it's passed down to the detective where we picked up pick up the story 40 years later oh excellent i like how you have that common thread yeah so it moves through time yeah cool. so it's kind of in the same vein with um it and true detective where we kind of flash forward and flash back um through this child in the beginning, who's Donald McInder, his uncle and father are in Bro there four generations of moonshiners in the Appalachian mountains. And uh, this rival uh, moonshining group comes in, who's connected to Dixie mafia, heavy arm, a whole crew comes in and kind of tries to move them out. And it erupts into a, a bloody rivalry that um, this evil entity will become a part of uh without giving too much away for future issues um and then we pick up 40 years later when the the child of the moonshiner D donald mackiner who becomes a detective after his family have been um just demonized uh throughout the county and throughout the town and mostly through southern georgia as this notorious family of murderers because they end up killing a lot of the uh rival crew in this uh still war moonshine war of 1981. so did you pick athens georgia because you're familiar with it or because it had to do with the dixieland mafia uh geography De just geography. So I, I needed okay. um, the story starts out with a, a college student who's murdered, who goes to the University of Georgia, who is which is in Athens, Georgia. Uh, I needed a place that was close to Appalachian Mountains and a place where the we had the dry counties um, right. during the, uh, you know, mm. uh, Moonshiner. You know, yeah, prohibition. Yeah, there was okay. still dry counties up till, oh gosh, recently, really. Um, but that area was uh, notorious for moonshining, okay. and generations of moonshiners. So it it was strictly for geography. Was this based on a true story? No, it's not. But like I said, the inspiration was from a true story. I, part of the story so years ago i had wrote um a screenplay that's where i kind of started out was uh trying to break in the screenwriting business about a detective in la which strictly all i took was the title downstreet detective because i loved the artwork of those old dime store novels from the 30s and 40s i just the the um, that uh, you have to see them. I'm not described it very good, but yeah, the old dime store novels, the artwork, um, the melodrama and the artwork, I just was really enth enthralled with. And I had written a story you, about a detective in, in LA who becomes a uh, dime store novelist. Would you compare it to pulp covers? Correct. Yes, exactly. Pulp covers. Okay. That, so uh, it's perfect. the ones where it's like uh, a gorgeous damsel and she's like, you know, being ignored by a man, like <laughs> yeah, basically, uh -oh. basically, yeah, or or a murderer is, is hiding behind a um a door with the uh, with a cop about ready to walk into it, or yeah. or a lot of it is uh, <laughs> women in bondage um, by this dastardly guy and um, stuff like that is uh, are those old covers that were pretty. Some cool. of those covers were very risque and probably wouldn't fly today. No, no. I think a lot of that it was probably before the, um, oh, goodness sakes, the Harris Code. I'm saying it wrong. But anyway, there was a lot of nudities mm -hmm. in film and stuff in the 1920s, 30s, 40s. And then uh, that all changed when um, 
there was uh, I can't recall his name. It starts with an H. The code came about where they said ixnay on any nudity and stuff like that. So there was a time period where there was actually a nudity in, in film until everything mm-hmm. became very um, Christian based and political and stuff. So and conservative. Yeah. Right. Yes. Those, those covers are always fun too. Cause when you find those, when you find them, you know, in, in garage sales or thrift stores or whatever, um, if you check and see who did the cover art, half the time you'll find an artist that, like, you know, and you're like, I didn't know that they would do something like this. Like, right. you yeah. always look at that stuff. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So I always had a love for those. And um, so that's kind of was part of it. And then um, I had written a story that took place in Desert Storm with this guy who gets caught in this cave and they accidentally uh, un- unleashed this evil entity and uh, that kind of was the beginning of it and then uh, like I said I I just didn't think it was enough until recently I listened to the podcast about the Dixie Mafia uh, serial killer or hitman I'm sorry. So these various uh, components came together and that's why you have this book now available. Yeah 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 it, mm-hmm. uh, it's I, I knew I had something pretty good when I started coming up with it. And um, I, like I said, I, I was a big fan of that type of storytelling with it and true detective where you have this hero who's young, who defeats this being or this person. And then what effect it has on them throughout the years. And then many years later, this thing person um, comes back and how they defeat it as they're older now. And, um, carry all this baggage through the years. So that's kind of how I wanted to approach it. Okay. I just, I, I always thought that was fun. So yeah, in, in the same vein as it. Yeah, exactly. The same vein as it. It's true detective, um, but it's its own um, entity of itself. Um, oh, sure. You know, and, you know, you know, it would be almost impossible to come up with a brand new idea, origin, etc. So instead, what we have to do is take all those ideas and make it our own. By yeah. you know, creating our own storyline, our own background, etc. So I'm sure that's well, and, and there's a reason why that you know those things work. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, so you, yeah, I, yeah. You've got a, a, I see you've got a couple of early bird specials that folks missed out on. This is yeah. kind of clever. This no longer available, like police tape kind of thing. That's yeah, neat. yeah. That's kind of <laughs> <good>. <laughs> so you've got uh, a digital. PDF version, right? Five dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good to do that because you know people want to, sometimes if you have international backers, they don't want to pay for the international shipping. Yeah, shipping's just insane. So oh hey yeah. hey Mrs. Good stuff, welcome. Oh hey I got yeah. I'm looking at the campaign. I'm not seeing the um the comments. Thank you for being here, Mrs. Good stuff. Yep, appreciate well, that. Hello there. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Ali, for saying something there. Let me go back to. Sorry, um, I, I no. love the chat. No, I that's love great. Yeah. To the because, chat. like I said, what I'm doing is I'm looking at his campaign page right now. I don't see the StreamYard screen, so it's great if you call out uh, anybody that joins us because we appreciate their presence and their their chats and, and things like that. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I do the same thing, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, John, tell us about this tier, this ten dollar tier here. Yeah, so you get the comic book, and then you also will get any stretch goals that get unlocked, um, and you also get the PDF too. So, okay. uh, and the shipping's very low. I've tried to keep it as low as possible. Um, I, of course, they're bagged and boarded, and uh, in the um, Gemini Thank mailer, you, yeah. so they don't get don't get any. Pro- and I switched <laughs> awesome. over this year because I had so many complaints. Uh, not so many, but a few. I did the. Um, the the bags where you can take it off instead of taped so um oh. that's that that's a, it didn't cost that much and it's so much nicer and it's easier too so okay. oh yeah, yeah i don't i don't like the tape the tape no. ones no. there was a um a debate recently as to whether or not bagging and boarding the books is to be expected and i was surprised because in my opinion and this is just mine i get it but i was thinking of course, that's expected. I yes. I can't imagine sending it without bag and board to these customers because, you know, they're buying either a $10 book, a $25 book, depending on the number of pages. 
mm-hmm. you know, that's a lot more than just picking it up off the shelf at a, at a comic book store because yeah. you're not just buying a comic, you're backing a project. And that's one of the important things people need to make that distinction when they're, when they're crowdfunding. They are crowdfunding the production of a book, not just buying a book off the shelf. But having said all that, as a creator, I think it's important to for customer service to bag and board those books. And oh, like yeah. you said, put them in a Gemini mailer, make sure that they get to their destination in one piece. Now, I, I recently got one in a Gemini mailer where the Gemini mailer was pretty messed up, but the book inside was protected by it. So not not a bit of damage to the book. Yeah. Yeah, if, the Gemini mailer is dirty. If yes. the mailer hadn't been there, your book would have been a crumpled mess probably. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, so that's this tier. We've got another early bird tier early bird tier that we missed out on. Dang it. But tell us about the twelve dollar tier. What's this? Yeah, so the twelve dollar is the variant cover, and you like so you get all the rewards, all the stretch goals. Um, when you go further along, you'll see the the variant cover. Um, oh, okay, yes, yeah, so it's at the bottom. See that. Keep on going. Yeah, I did. Um, I did a. I wanted to have that look of the dime store novel. So um, if you just scroll down, you can a little bit. You'll be able to see that uh, some more. You'll be able to see that variant cover right there. I'm really, I'm really proud of it. I wanted that exactly. Like I said, if you looked at the old. I want the coloring to look those like those um, old dime store novels. Um, the right, it's almost like a, a muted there. coloring, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did Lucas that's do the that part? Cover. I'm sorry. Was it Lucas that did that coloring? No, it was. Um, uh, oh shoot, I can't recall. It's the first time I ever worked with him. He's out of the same studio that Lucas is. Um, okay. Pretty much everybody that has worked on this is out of the stone tower studio with, with exception of the the individual that did the interior artwork so his name is um luca i'm gonna murder his name i <laughs> uh uh Cicchiti. i think it's italian Cicchiti. yes you're right i'm sorry <laughs> i um i if i remember correctly i've worked with luca before yeah, he's awesome. He, he's yeah. he's really awesome. His rates are are not outrageous, and uh, he captures that black that noir feel in the black and white. So, excellent. I would have made the whole comic black and white, but I wanted to differentiate between the past and the present. So, anything that takes place in 1981 is in black and white, and anything that's in the present is in color. Oh, nice. nice classic storytelling move. Nice. That's Thank you. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, so your name in the comic. Tell us about this tier. Yeah, so there's a thank you page on the last page. And uh, if you back it, you actually get your name as a, on the thank you page. And also you get an exclusive sticker that uh, my wife will be making on her cricket <laughs> that she's done with the other campaign. So <laughs> really? okay, she's, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to be a pretty cool sticker that's got the Dime Store Detective logo on it. So you get that. And that's the only way you can get it is, is through those uh, higher tiers. So. Okay, that's cool. Uh, it's neat that you've got her support and her uh, participation. Yes, yes, she's a great editor too. She's a teacher, so. Oh yeah, that helps a lot. You bet. Yeah, yeah. So you marry five up. times is this like a retailer tier? Yeah, yeah. You get five, five of them, and you can mix it up. Um, and I'm only charging forty five for them. Nobody's backed that one or the other one yet, but hopefully. Somebody will, but uh, yeah, it's a it's it's a nice discount that I put on there. Well, I've heard that having a, a retailer tier sometimes pans out or pays off, sometimes doesn't. But I think yeah. it's worth it to put a retailer yes. tier on there because you never know exactly. when you'll catch the eye of somebody who's got their own brick and mortar shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't hurt to, to put it on there. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so, a, yeah. and oh, a ten uh, a ten copy version as well okay yeah and like i said you can mix it up so it's a pretty decent discount um when you think about it from the 10 and 12 dollar one so oh i was just going to ask you what you mean by you can mix it up but i think i see it right here yeah you the can variants. include up to you four have... variants out of the yeah. 10 correct oh, you know what let me go back up to the one before then how many can you oh two variants okay yeah 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 that's good just less than half uh for both of those tiers that's pretty good that's a good that's a good deal yeah i, th- I think so Oh, an interior art page by Luca, right? Yep, yep. So no okay. one has um, purchased one of those yet, which kind of surprised me. But um, it is issue one. So, you know, I haven't built up a uh, fan base yet for it. So I Do think we have in some examples issues. of the interior art further down. 
correct. Yep, I, I show off the first uh, seven pages of the comic book. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, the, the latest victim of a serial killer. I see. And I have the dialogue all in there. So you can get a pretty good feel of the writing <laughs> and what you're in for um, once, you, once you read those pages. Yeah, okay. Um, it looks like it's a good story set up here. This is the first six pages you said, right? That's uh, for seven pages, actually. That's a, okay. that's a double page. Page two and three is a double page. That's why it looks a little odd. Right and here? I start off with a prologue, um, which most people don't do in comics. Um, but um, if you scroll down a little bit um, or up, I'm sorry, then you'll up? see the prologue. Um, yeah. Yep. Right there. It's oh, a letter okay. uh, that the father writes to the son in 1999. And, I love prologues if they're done well. I mean, basically, you're warming up the audience. You're doing some foreshadowing, um, and I believe I do that pretty well. It looks like a worn letter, so it looks pretty cool. Um, the project manager uh, created that, so he, he okay. did a pretty awesome job, I think. So Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'll give people the chance to read that on their own. We don't want yeah, yeah, to yeah. spend the time to read that. Exactly. But, uh, so, but yeah, so then, great. yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, then the next page is basically where you get, it says 1981 in the present. Uh, if you go down some more, that's page two and three, where, um, you know, you can, I set it up so you can differentiate and it's, it's the same place in a different, different time period. So in the oh. last image, you have somebody being buried and in the exact same spot, cops are looking at the uh, dead bodies that you see in the splash page of page three um where we kind of kick off the story gotcha. where this, the serial killer has left his latest victim in, on at the exact same spot the detective's father and uncle buried a bunch of bodies 40 years ago so what's the connection uh that's the mystery of the story starting out is why he's chosen this spot and she's um found with a the bootleggers moonshine bottle in her and down her throat from when they were moonshiners 40 years ago. So the murder is making it very obvious and very clear that there's a connection with uh, the detective's father and uncle and the detective himself. And he's trying to get the detective's uh, attention for what we'll find out as the story goes along. Okay, great. Yeah, so it's good then that you have examples of the interior art because you've got that tier up here where people can get it. And, you know, it, I think it's a good deal. 140 isn't bad for an interior art page. No, and, and, you get so, the, and you get a comic book with it, too. So really, it's kind of like 130. Oh, yeah. You get the comic, you get the PDF. So there's another $5 that if you yeah, bought it yeah, separately. It's, yeah, so it's a, sticker, it's a good deal. Thank you page. And, of course, any stretch goals. So, yeah, that's that is a good deal. Yeah, and yeah. then you've got this uh, $200 tier. Yeah, which, uh, which you're getting it for free. It's a Zoom meeting with me. Uh, you know, I just kind of threw it in there. They say you always should have some kind of really lofty goal. And it's um, it's actually been bought. So that's kind of cool. But um, oh, yeah, that is cool. Yeah. So it's uh, something so, in so there. So it's every you get to chill with you. Exactly. And you get a T-shirt, the exclusive T-shirt that... Um, from the dumpster detective That's does cool. it have the uh the regular cover the, the variant it's, cover they get or something to choose. else yeah the, so on there it'll say, they get to choose which cover they'd like to have on the t-shirt oh yeah okay excellent well that's yeah. really That's nice cool. of you <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, who knows because i honestly don't know which cover i like better myself so i i uh I don't know. They're both pretty cool. I, and they're so different that it's, it's yeah, pretty neat. Say, that the high I really boom. do like the, the pulp cover, but I think I'd go with the one with the entity like looming over the city. Yeah, yeah. I like said that I, I love them both. So so the stretch goals uh, at 2,500, the, the quality of the paper stock has improved. Yeah. Uh, oh, so is this a different sticker at 3,500? Correct. Yeah, it's a different sticker that um, is going to have the entity in it. Okay. You've got a $5,000 stretch goal. Yeah, I think that's the print one. Or maybe it's a bookmarker. It's I can't the bookmarker, yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the bookmarker. And then the exclusive um, print you said is at 7000 Yeah, yeah. 
And then if we get there, more to come. I know what that's yeah. like. I've got I've got a few selected, but I'm also prepared to add some if it takes off. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea what I'm gonna put in. So <laughs> probably another probably another print or something. Who knows? Okay. So here's the pulp cover again. Here's the regular yeah. cover. Oh no, wait, wait. This is something different. Yes, this is a new add-on that I put in. I moved. I was going to be part of it, and then I moved, and I couldn't find the cars. And then just a few days ago, I found the cars. So I put together the prototype um, of this uh, Barracuda um, that the Moonshiners use and that is passed down. It's a um, custom cover, uh, custom cardboard. The, custom, uh, the backing, yeah. the backing custom board? Port, so correct. is this an add-on or a stretch goal? It's an add-on. It's an add-on. See, yeah, yeah. How much? Yeah. How, let me see. Does it say here how much is this? Um, like? it's uh, forty dollars. Okay, that's sweet. I like that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty cool. I've sold one so far, um, and but I just put it on a few days ago because I just found the cars a few days ago. I had a, a special order them um, because uh, they don't make them anymore. So. Oh, all right. So it's a rarity too. Yeah, yeah, it is. And then if you missed out on Alpha Dogs 1 and 2, because uh, I hadn't even thought about it. I was just waiting for Alpha Dogs 3 to include them. But somebody had asked me about it. So I said, well, shoot, I'll um, I'll put that on as an add-on. So you can buy my other two comics, Alpha Dogs 1 and 2, uh, as an add-on. And for those of you who don't know, he's right. Alpha Dogs 3 is, is coming soon. Had a little bit of a delay, but it's definitely in the works. And that's yeah. got a fantastic cover, too, folks. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's just awesome. That. The variant cover is going to really knock people's socks off. If, if you're a fan of Empire Strikes Back movie poster, then you'll definitely want to see this. <laughs> because I figured my first homage cover, I'm going to do my all-time favorite movie. So okay. I picked Empire Strikes Back. And I haven't showed it off yet, um, but I can't wait to show it off. I showed it off to a few people that have been big fans of Alpha Dogs, and they are pretty blown away about it. So, Excellent. Yeah. I showed today, if you go to my Facebook and or my Twitter, um, I showed off page uh, one of Alpha Dogs issue three. And it's it's going to be really exciting. The one and two are, has been built up for issue three and a oh, lot, so of, like uh, set up. A lot okay. of action. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So the very first page is uh, mercenaries um, armed to the teeth, ready to barge in a house. So that'll give you a good indication of what's to come. Yeah, right. And I wrote the script for the I just finished before the interview the script for the trailer for it. And you can actually see the trailer on here. Um I think. I can no, I, I, I'm sorry. Um, you know what? I take that back. I think I, oh, I don't okay. think I, I don't no, I maybe I did include it. If you scroll it might be on there. Um close to where the um close to where the cars are, I think. But anyway. Oh, Back of where the car is. Okay. It's possible. I can't recall if I did it on this one or if I did it on my, um, no, I, you know, no, I'm sorry. Like I, I'm a liar. <laughs> it's on my, um, <laughs> it, it was on the update I did today for the backers. Um, okay. uh, so if I you folks want to see it. that trailer, back this book and you'll be, you'll be able to see the updates. <laughs> yes. 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 And actually I think anybody can see the updates on here. I, um, on the Kickstarter, it's somewhere on the Kickstarter where you can actually, I believe, look at the updates. I could be mistaken, but I, I thought I thought you could somewhere on here. Because I only know that because when I did my first Kickstarter, I screwed up and put on the one of the updates the PDF, and uh, so people got to see the PDF for free for like seven seven days. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was my first Kickstarter, you know. Okay, well, yeah, you know what? We all have things like that where we. We have, even if it's a successful campaign, we do have lessons learned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you never, I'm sure you know, uh, doing a crowdfunder, you learn something every campaign and just about this every is true. week. Yep. So, uh, yes, you can go to the updates. It's right here. If you come up on the Kickstarter page, it's right here. It's the third tab. Yeah. Yeah, you and you can see, see the trailer for issue one, or you can go to YouTube and if you type in Alpha Dogs John Dexter, Alpha Dogs comic, you can uh -huh. see the trailers for um, Alpha Dogs one and two. The trailers okay. are really, really awesome. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but they're um, they pretty professional. I, I was a big fan of the Watchmen um, motion comics, so I wanted to implement that into oh, the trailer okay. for Alpha Dogs. So there's movement in there. It's it's top notch. 
what was that called? It, it was the black sale or something like that. The black sales. Yep. Yeah. Well, okay. they did that as off, but their Watchmen, the comic was done as a lie. It was done as a motion comic back. It's oh, probably it? been a good 10 years. Oh, it's, it's excellent. It's so good. The narrator is awesome. Yeah. I got to check that out. Yeah. Cause as good as the book is, the motion comic is even better. The narrator just nails it. He's awesome. And, and it's motion. So it's cool too. <laughs> so there's a narrator. Are there also voiceover actors or just no, the narrator? No, just the narrator. And you don't need oh. it. Trust me. The narrator is so good that he just, he knocks it out of the park. Excellent. All right. Well, we'll it was it on YouTube too. I, I bought it, but I was exposed to it because I just happened to see it on YouTube and somebody years ago had, I don't know if they're still on there, but uh, yeah, they had uploaded all, I believe it was 12 parts. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah. Because uh, there was 12 issues. Trade. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I have all 12 issues plus the trade paperback that collects them all. I was a big wow. fan too. Yeah. 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 It's, it's still to this day, my all time favorite comic book is the Watchmen. It, it really did turn the genre on its ear. Um, yes. It was surprising. Have, have you seen the script? No. Uh -uh. No, script. you talked about uh, Alan Moore's script or the movie script? A Alan Moore's script. Yeah, oh. I did see it. Yeah, it, he, it's pretty cool. The notes and stuff. Yeah, years ago, it, it was it was pretty cool the way he he writes. Um, he's, he's a little bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, yeah. But you have to be crazy <laughs> to write, you know. He's like, like all, that. all caps, like no. <laughs> I was going to no say sometimes enter. those creatives have the the crazy the, the crazies have the creative minds. <laughs> I, yeah, I, just, I I really want to watch his um on writing that he did. I, I need to need to get that. It'd be pretty interesting. I I I have all respect for the artists of any uh, Alan Moore <laughs> book <laughs> because the the patience they have to read his scripts is divine. Yeah, but you're also working with the greatest comic mind in the last 30 years. So I, I don't think they're complaining. Yeah. If, if I could draw, I'd want to give it a shot. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I mean, Dave Gibbons is made his career is made just off of that. Yes. You know what? I missed uh, a chat earlier from Rick as we were looking at the campaign. He said he loves the cover. So that's good. Too. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Go to the Kickstarter and pledge. I really appreciate it. I'm really trying to get by, Hook or by crook, get this thing pledged as soon as I can because I think it, I, I right now I have 94 people watching it and only 12 people who have purchased it from that. So oh, I don't know okay. if people are waiting to see if this pledges. I mean, if it fulfills, I don't know. I, it's it's very odd when people watch a uh, Kickstarter as it's going on. <laughs> you know, it's like pledge you know, or don't I, pledge. I think you're right. I think a lot of people are waiting to see if it funds. And then yeah. if it does, they're they're more confident in in setting up a pledge. But I mean, it's it's self fulfilling, folks. You got to pledge to make it fun. So <laughs> because if it doesn't, yeah, if they don't. The money doesn't come out till after the campaign ends and it's fulfilled. So I don't know if some people uh, don't think, well, I'm just going to have this taken out and then it's going to come back or worried. But no, no funds come out until That's it true. is fulfilled. And and after the 30 days. So even if it fulfills tomorrow and in a week, you're like, you know, I just don't have the funds uh, and you just pull your pledge and no money has come out. So, yeah, no money comes out until after the Kickstarter. So I have I keep forgetting to tell people that because I know that probably is for even people that's pledged alpha dogs. They um, even though they've done Kickstarter, they still sometimes, I think, forget about that, which it's easy to forget because Indiegogo takes it out as soon as you pledge. So Right. And I see pros and cons to both to both methodologies. I, yeah. I typically prefer that it gets taken out right away so that I yeah. it's on top of mine and I can take care of that budget budgetary need right away. On the other hand, like you said, if you pledge now, um, it's not taken away from you right away. It's not till it funds and fulfills. So there's that to consider too. You can, you can back out if. Yeah. Uh, I've been very reason. fortunate on this campaign. I've only had two people back out so far. One of them was a $4 pledge and they did it the next day. I just don't get that. <laughs> like, 
what you can't afford a gallon of gas and you do it the next day. What was the <laughs> point? I just it's so frustrating. Um I hard. had a lot of people pull out of um Alpha Dogs too. I mean it was quite a bit. That was really frustrating. So I think backers don't realize, you know, what us as creators on their uh, you know what it it does mentally to you be you know, because you're just like I oh my god. Cause that was it was quite a bit for Alpha Dogs too that um was they backed out of but on the first day of projectile reptile i had somebody refund and i was like oh what oh no but you know what you know what it was though they were refunding that so they could back a bigger tier nice so i'm like oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> then, then we're good <laughs> you're like yeah. all right i feel better now yeah but yeah. when you first see the refund you're like oh what did i do <laughs> i know i know i i actually um i was so frustrated that i actually asked the person when they did it for not this one I, i'm not gonna do it again it's just bad form but i was so frustrated because they they pledged to alpha dogs too pulled their pledge the next day pledged again and pulled their pledge immediately and i just said did i do something to upset i said as delicately yeah. As delicately as I could, but I want to just reach through and slap them upside the head. <laughs> yeah. Are you trying to like psych me out or something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, in unfortunately, there's been a, some instances, not it's been a few months now that people just just for shits and giggles pledge a bunch of money and then right before the Kickstarter ends, pulls it out. Why? Oh. I don't know. Oh, yeah. that's terrible. I've heard that's... of that happening. Why do wow. people do that? I'm mean, like, you know, what? I don't know. Life. Do, do something yeah, exactly. productive with yourself. Yeah, so yeah. speaking of productive, we've got this awesome campaign, Dime Store Detective, with, uh, you know, he's he's a man after my own heart. He's got a number of different genres in this book and um, different components that bring together this noir pulp feel. Uh, I'd say give it a chance. It's 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 a great price point. I think you won't be disappointed. And, you know, just looking at Alpha Dogs, it looks to me like uh, this guy knows what he's doing. So folks get out there and back John Dexter. So John, we talked before we came on the air that this is a late one because you get up early for work. You're absolutely welcome to stay, but I totally understand if you need to bow out. Yeah, I'm going to have to bow out this time, but definitely okay. next time in the future. Um, I'll uh, definitely like to stay because I'll be, um, I'll come back on and watch and uh, see about her campaign. It looked kind of, I looked a little bit at hers on Twitter and it looked pretty fun. So okay. oh, thank you. And, and when you launch Alpha Dogs 3, if you want to come on my show again, make sure you get in contact. Absolutely, I will. I will. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited about it, Alpha Dogs 3 and to show the trailer, too. So okay. it was nice meeting you, and I appreciate nice. it. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks for being on, John. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, too. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to pivot and talk about your projects, both of which are in the pre-launch sign-up phase. Yes, I have so, email uh, email list set up. Which one would you like me to start with? Um, you you. How about you choose? <laughs> All right, I will choose. I'm going to go with the novel, which is the haunting. Of, whoops, I got to hit the right buttons here. Sorry, <laughs> the haunting of Bonneville Manor. Tell yes. us about that. The Haunting of Bonneville Manor. It is a uh, novel for middle grades, so ages 10 uh, through 13. Um, it is about a girl um, from 1998 who is taken back in time by a ghost um, to 1917. <laughs> oh, I, I have to wow. get it right because sometimes I mess up and I say 1905 for some reason. It's 1917 um, in England. And um, she has to help a, a boy solve his own murder. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And uh, because it is written for middle grades, um, I, it, it doesn't have like, you know, crazy harsh intense um language uh it, it's more in the vein of like anamorphs or goosebumps type language okay um you, you may have seen me just sign up there i did that because oh, I've, got you. Some, yeah, I've got some i've got some uh, step granddaughters that might uh be interested in this so let's see if you can uh if you can convince me it sounds like this is be great for them as a christmas gift well i have um i have you know, my daughter is 11 so 
Okay. I, I have all these books that I'm writing and I'm like, my kid can't read any of my books because <laughs> they're all for grownups. Right. And, uh, and yeah. And I was like, man, I had this story idea from a long time ago that, that I wrote um, a whole thing of it a long time ago and all my friends really liked it. And I just kind of like set it aside. Uh, and then I was like, man, I'll, I'll revive that and I'll turn it into like, I'll, I'll fix all the problems with it and I'll turn it into something new and better. Um, and, and so I thought, okay, I'll make it a mystery, uh, you know, with the time travel still. And I made it make sense, make sense, but I'm sending this, this girl back into a time, you know, that's right when world war one is just starting and, and people have sent their kids, um, from the cities in England to the country. Um, cause they, they used to do that when, wars broke out they would send their kids out into the country to you know the houses of strangers um and and so that's yeah and that's where she uh ends up um that's what happens in chronicles of narnia as well they get sent um to the house of you know relative strangers just a random professor because they're away from the war um that's what happens in bed knobs and broomsticks as well so okay. um yeah, it's it's and and I have her back there with no idea how to get back. Uh, you know, she's she's just an American kid from 1998, so she has no and I chose that cuz that's when I was 11. Okay, uh, perfect. Yeah, so 98 is uh, when my oldest son was born. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so she she goes back in time and and she has no idea about anything you know the public school system has failed her so she doesn't know what's going on politically she she talks totally differently but i have the the other kids you know when when she says things they just kind of chalk it up as oh she's just american like oh, you know okay. she she doesn't know all her manners because she's american like <laughs> so that uh that'll that bridges sort of the confusion gap between her her grammar and stuff and how she wouldn't well, know what I was going to say, speaking of American and not being American, if I remember right, the artist on this piece right here is not an American. He's not. No, <laughs> he's not. Yeah. Tell us who, who's the artist here. Um, the art is by, uh, Corey Barton. He, ah. um, does Kozor and I think he's doing, He's doing something else right now with androids or something. Most of his stuff is for grown-ups, but I liked his style and I wanted to do like an Edward Gorey kind of thing. Um okay. where these old like gothic uh uh kind of not silly but like um whimsical, like old dark and whimsical uh Edward Gorey stuff uh with cross hatching and the Bartons are really big on their cross hatching and I like it too. So I was like, Hey, can you design me a cover that, you know, looks like this, but you know, isn't boring. Um, <laughs> and, and is still, you know, visually dynamic. Uh, Cause you can do cross hatching wrong. Um, you can look like a field of snow. So uh, I, I, and I think he did great. Um, I'm going to have him sign prints and uh send them up here so every book comes with a print um oh, and nice. and i have a because i have my kids friends over and i show them all this stuff for the book and i'm like hey does this seem cool does this seem cool and they all seem pretty pumped about hey sumo torre um so i figure you know if my target demographic is excited then i'm doing it right exactly you got a great test uh audience there yeah, yeah, and they they don't know who Corey Barton is. Um, but when I said, you know, I said, hey, what would you guys think if I had the artist, you know, sign this? And they were like, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> you guys that's don't great. even know who this dude is, and you can't read his other books, probably. But <laughs> you yeah, know, right? that's cool. Yeah, when you it was Corey, I'm like, hmm, you must have told him to be a little tame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. I, and yeah, I. I sent it. I was like, it's it's uh, Edwardian times, so you know she's she's gonna have this um, you know frock on, right? <laughs> that's right. Uh, 
And that's probably not a word that most of us know, but I, I do know what a frock is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Corey and Clayton both worked together on the hardcover version of Siamese for me, my first crowdfunding book. They're great to work with. Yeah, they're uh, very chill, very understanding. And he was very patient. <laughs> <laughs> they are very chill. Um, I did this? not say when this was going to launch yet because I'm not sure yet. There's some things that I have to... um that I have to work out, but, okay. uh, so, uh, I wanted, I wanted to make it, um, cool, you know, make it something special to where parents and kids both felt that they were getting more than a book. Um, cause, cause that's what I want, you know, when I'm looking for stuff for my kid to buy, you know, I want to feel mm -hmm. like I'm getting a lot. So I was like, you know, I think, um, uh, bookmark would be cool, but you know, paper bookmarks, you know, kids will lose them. They'll get wet or whatever. Um, and then also I didn't want to have to reformat a whole nother thing. So uh, I looked into it and I found these metal bookmarks that glow in the dark. Nice. And uh, I was like, oh, that would be cool. And so I, you know, I tested it right with my my kid and her friends and <laughs> right. i was like and i and i bought a couple of them and i i showed them to them and i was like what do you think of this and i turned off the light and they were like wow and one little girl it was so cute she um she just says i've always wanted a bookmark oh, <laughs> I was <geez>. like, wow <laughs> okay like well you know, we know so. where she stands on the bookmark versus stickers uh, debate <laughs> i know my my test subjects were very excited and, and it was very <laughs> sweet. And I was like, honey, I have bookmarks for days. I'll give you one now too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a neat idea. And of course it ties in with the theme that you are giving, you're creating a book here. Yeah. So well, and there's, there's ghosts and, and it's mysterious. And um, I've all, I'm also including, um, I've got a timeline in the back of uh, key elements of um what's happening in in the world during this time i'm keeping okay. it um um uh you know that age friendly um yes. but not many people know anymore what even was going on around world war ii or i'm sorry world war one um right so i have that on there uh and then i also i'm gonna have a list um because my ava my main character she goes into the library and she starts reading old sci-fi some of the or most original like first sci-fi novels uh -huh. to try and figure out um you know, she says well time travel is science fiction so you know maybe maybe it's just science and maybe the people who wrote science fiction knew something that you know that could help me that i didn't know so she goes back into this library and she reads you know some of the very first science fiction books to try and figure out a way to get back to 1998 um, and, and so I've included a list of, um, a bunch of the, the original sci-fi novels from, from way back then. Hello, Eric. Welcome. Um, including, uh, one that, that heavily, uh, heavily influenced it. Um, and it's this, this crazy, uh, trilogy, um, by this random lady, uh, that's called the, um, the adventures of the amulet about these kids who travel through time with this amulet. And no one's ever heard of it, but it was a big deal in England in the time. So I was like, man, if I include a list, you know, of all these these books that these kids can read, you know, where I say, like, if you like this, then then maybe revive some of these classics, you know, and she, you know, she reads other stuff, you know, uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth type of stuff, too. But, okay. like, I thought that might get kids more excited to read, like, the classics and you know, maybe stop reading stuff that is written today that's maybe written less intelligently. <laughs> gotcha. No, that's a great idea to include that list. People yeah, and I, I want to do more. Um, I'm looking into uh, some grants and stuff that'll make it so that I can include stuff like a t-shirt and, um, oh, and I'm going to sign every single book. Um, and I do have a trailer right there that's also approved by the by the girls. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's a good point. I was going to ask you, uh, how long is it? The book itself? The trailer, sorry. Oh, the trailer? Uh, it's less than 30 seconds, I believe. Oh, all right. Can we play it? Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's, I, let's I don't. I don't make long trailers. Okay.
Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, maybe it's 58 seconds, right? Yeah. I, it feels like less to me. <laughs> Uh, Sumo, this is middle grade, so it's 10, uh, ages is about 10 through 13. Um, you know, always up to a parent to decide what they think their kid's ready for, but that's um, what I'm aiming for. Jeremy, thanks for being here. Appreciate your watching. We've got uh, Eric Grant. I heard you say hi a few minutes ago. We want to make sure we say hi to Eric. Yes. Um, Welcome, Jeremy. Welcome, Eric. <laughs> and of course, we see you, Sumo. <laughs> we even we even see the comments you're making that uh, fit with the theme of what we were talking about. Where to go? Right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, also, I have a separate Twitter account that's just for this. Oh, um, yeah. Because yeah, it's not related to anything else that I'm doing because I wanted to keep it child friendly. But I know like a lot of people still let their you know the kids of that age use the internet, so. The oh, Twitter okay. account that's connected to that page just is very specifically child-friendly stuff about um, World War One, uh, like interesting information, how they, how the kids would dress, uh, what games that they would play, um, information on books to read. Like it's all just in that, like in that vein, aimed. It's all stuff that I would let my kid look at. So okay. Hey, Aaron, thank you for being here. Welcome, so, Aaron. Yeah, if you could uh, drop that in the private chat, and I'll make sure that I put it in the description for people to have a look later. Oh, sweet, Sumo. That's awesome. Oh, uh, one more thing I almost forgot to mention. I When I have it live, I'm also going to include um, a tier where if people don't have someone that they think um, in their in their life that they think would want it or or is a different age range or anything like mm -hmm. that i'm gonna have a tier where they can donate a book um to a local uh kid um that's homeschooled or girl scouts or to a library oh nice that's a good feature to have i thought so, so. let us now let me um i'm gonna remove that and then i'm gonna share your comic book that you've got coming out Okay, and that one's for grown-ups. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> so yeah. let me go to Chrome tab and bring up this. The comic, the comic book is what my kid is not allowed to read. <laughs> is, yeah. All right, so we've got a few minutes. Tell us, let's walk through uh, what you want to tell us about Egg Beater. Egg Beater. Egg Beater is very simple. Egg Beater is very fun. Um, I'm going... Uh, I, I, I'm going off the inspiration of like trauma films, if you know um, what those are, like uh, uh, the Toxic Avenger. Oh yeah, okay, yep. Um, yeah, they're remaking that uh, it's here soon um, with that like little person from Game of Thrones. Um, I can't wrap both for my niece. Peter Peter Dinklage. <laughs> yes, that guy. Um, okay. They're they're remaking that with him, but. Uh, uh, that's that's the vein I'm going for is like um, that that gritty you know uh, sort of dark but like punny um, aesthetic. Okay. And he's um, so so it's going to be full of full of puns, tons of them, and um, just like gross, intense death scenes and um, tragedy. Uh, mixed with like comedy um is it's gonna be right here 
Uh, yeah, that is a that is when we were doing character design. Uh, okay. Those are the very first character design like uh, inks that my artist uh, Vinny Scatina ever did. Oh, hey, Dom Shin's here. Welcome. This looks like rolling pins. Hi, Dom. Thanks for being here. <laughs> yeah, he dual wields metal rolling pins um, that are on his back, as you can see, like samurai swords. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. So, so that he can just, you know, grab them off his back like a ninja turtle, uh, smash people's heads in, you know, whatever. There's a scene where he pulls pulls one over a guy's neck and and rolling pins his neck down all, all the way off and squishes it off. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that's the that's that bluish one right there, <laughs> where his eyeballs start like popping out of his head and stuff. Melts um, down to your face, not on your hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do you want me to play the trailer for this one too? Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's shorter than the other one, but apparently I didn't know. So yeah. don't quote let's, me. Let's give it a shot. Okay. 20 seconds. Okay, good. <laughs> Are you talking about the music or the noise? <laughs> the noise at the end. <laughs> so um, if you take a look at his face, you can see that he has, um, he's got burn marks all over the side of his body because he had boiling hot donut oil poured all over him. Oh, um, and it, you know, it burned his face and smushed down, you know, in rivulets, his skin is all messed up. So he can't actually control um, you know, his saliva. So when, when he's coming after you, what you hear is the <laughs> noise. Um, <laughs> and the, yeah, that's me. And then, um, then you hear he, he got his name from an old hand cranked egg beater, right. That he modified with, um, like razors. He like, he like welds them on. And, and so what you hear is the <laughs> of like the, the egg beaters, he like comes after you and it's, He's got to dig into it because it, it fits under the side of his whole body. Um, and that that idea was uh, my artist, Vinny. Um, he came up with that because it started out where the egg beater was just a little handheld one. And he was like, nah, it won't work like that. It needs to be <laughs> big and insane. And I was like, sweet, we can dig it through people's stomachs and stuff. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Gosh. Yeah, this one's not the all ages <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, <laughs> but it's still like I it'll it'll be fun, you know. And um, like Mo Biggs, uh, when he heard about it, he's the one who was like, "Oh, so it's like the Punisher mixed with Gordon Ramsay." And I'm like, "Yeah," because he's a baker. Here, yeah, mm -hmm. he's a baker whose family uh was killed in front of him by gangsters, and um his his bakery was burned to the ground. They thought he was dead. Um, and, and he comes back to get his revenge and he kills 13 people because that's a baker's dozen. Oh, yep. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, and, uh, I have three trading cards that are currently planned. They're going to be done like, um, like a recipe. So they're the recipe for death trading cards. And those are being drawn, uh, by hockey and they're so funny. Like the, they're, <laughs> they're they're like pretzel shapes and and you know scrambled <laughs> brains and stuff like it's super fun hockey is really good at the gore <laughs> yeah yeah you wouldn't think so but like i know he, right but yeah he I, he did one i'm sorry i don't remember which campaign it was for but he had like somebody ripping somebody's arms off <laughs> oh yeah that was for um ar-15 orangutan oh yeah okay yep yeah it was, it was the orangutan ripping the dude's arm off yep Yep, yep. And the the Egg Beater was supposed to be a movie. Um for years and years I kept trying to make it a movie and I I had people, you know, lined up to to be in it. I I still have my friend who was going to play the Egg Beater himself, um Eric Hatcher, uh my friend is lined up to do Egg Beater forever if I can ever make it a movie, but um I I had uh, I had locations scouted and I had 
that that music that you heard is music that I had specifically created for the movie as um like his monster theme how like you know uh movie or horror movies had like monster monster oh, sure. themes the yeah. exorcist theme you know which one it is when you feel like the halloween theme everybody knows you know their their spooky theme i was like i want that and i had him take this really old song a uh, hungarian song that is supposed to be cursed it's a suicide song that is about like losing love and stuff i was like i want you to take that as your inspiration and and make <laughs> it into this and and it was perfect because eric hatcher is from hungary oh my gosh that is perfect it <laughs> comes full circle for you <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right. So for those of you who are in the chat now, and for those of you who watch it later, please take the time, uh, both links for her egg beater comic book and the haunting of Bonneville Manor novel are in the description. I'll get the Twitter uh, address from her and put that in the description too, for the haunting of Bonneville Manor, because it's separated because it's all ages where this, this is adult. <laughs> and, um, that, that does bring us to the top of the hour. We're actually a couple minutes over. Thank you so much for staying past the hour. I appreciate you coming on as my guest co-host. Sorry, um, I just get so excited when I talk no, about my stuff. <laughs> you know what? That's great because your passion shines through. And that's what leads people to be you know confident and backing because obviously you put care into the creation. So. Well, yeah, and it's and it's so that. fun. It's like yeah, it, right? it's so fun. <laughs> and sumo, no, I didn't make you listen to the to the suicide song. It it's a different <laughs> song. I just told him to take inspiration. It's okay. You'll be fine, sumo. Okay. <laughs> You're good. Oh, and then he's got the shrimp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, though, we'll go ahead and end the stream. Thanks again uh, for being my guest co-host. Thank you uh, for the chat. Thank you for having here. me on. It's and you know what. Don Chin, if anybody knows puns, it's Don. <laughs> so if you've got his endorsement, you've got something good going here. <laughs> I know. Look at it. He's saying he looks ripe for it. Nice. I love it. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, Sumo says plug your book. Yeah. Uh, Sumo, at the beginning of the show, I he played uh, the trailer. But you know what we'll do? We will go out on the trailer, too. So thanks, everybody, for being here. And, uh, yeah, back projectile reptile. Good night. Good night. Infamous gunslinger Desmond Gibbons, better known across the Wild West as the Cactus Kid, comes to the sleepy town of Clarkson. Trouble finds him in the unlikeliest of sources, the Sheriff. After their conflict, the Cactus Kid finds himself inexplicably wearing the badge of a lawman. Later, while on the trail of a serial killer, he and his deputy run afoul of a powerful druid, and the events that lead to the Cactus Kid's transformation into the hulking, four-armed projectile reptile are even more than the druid bargained for. From the Wild West to current-day Los Angeles, where he meets superheroes Black Eagle and Red Hawk, and forms an uneasy alliance with the stunning but deadly Kitty Hawk. Join the projectile reptile on a journey of gunslinging druidic magic, superheroes, and artifacts. Projectile Reptile from Dojo Kun Comics, only on Indiegogo. Are you ready for the truly Wild West?